Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at how we might use solo taxonomy to help us to develop our understanding of the cardiovascular system. So what we've got in front of us are a series of hexagons with pieces of information on them which I have already divided into unistructural, the dark blue, multistructural which is the green and relational which is the light blue. And the idea is that we build up our understanding of the cardiovascular system using firstly the unistructural hexagons followed by the multistructural hexagons and finally where applicable the relational hexagons. So in the first instance we might ask ourselves the question well what is the cardiovascular system what does it consist of and we would say that it consists of three things the first is the heart the second is blood and the third is blood vessels. Now the whole purpose of the solo taxonomy is that I develop each of these points beyond the first or unistructural point that I've made. Now in order to make that a little bit more simple for myself I'm going to unravel these hexagons just as if I was given them as a physical pack to see what I've got and what I can actually um, connect to the key points to do with the heart, the blood and the blood vessels. So I've unravelled those now and as you can see there's a fair number of green hexagons there so what I'm going to do in my next stage is to develop, is to break those down further into three separate groups, one for the heart, one for the blood and one for the blood vessels. So you can see here that I've now divided those multistructural components into three distinct groups and now I'm going to build upon my three unistructural points. So if we first start by looking at the heart and the blood, we can say that the heart is a muscle pump, and we put that down there, which obviously pumps blood, which is rich in oxygen, so oxygen-rich blood to the vital organs, but also to the working muscles. And we mustn't overlook the fact that the blood also transports um, waste products such as as carbon dioxide and lactic acid away from the working muscles and returns them back to the lungs where they are removed. Now I could at this point add in the concept of blood shunting and I might put it up here between organs and working muscles, let's put it there. Um, the idea being that blood shunting is when oxygen is redirected from the organs to the working muscles during exercise to ensure that they have enough energy in order to carry out the movement and work that they're required to do. So if we move quickly on to the blood vessels now, we can say, okay, well, what are the blood vessels? Well, we know hopefully that blood vessels consist of arteries, uh, veins, and capillaries. So we can put those in there. Um, and also that with exercise, uh, blood pressure blood pressure, I should say, increases. Now this could be another relational point now because we might say that blood pressure, give the definition, is the uh, the amount of force which is applied to the inside walls of the arteries um, by the blood and during exercise that will increase and we might also throw in here that we know that there are two different types of blood pressure. First is systolic blood pressure and the second is diastolic blood pressure. We might go further to say that the systolic blood pressure is the higher of the two numbers, is the greater force on the inside walls of the arteries when the heart beats, and the diastolic blood pressure is when there's the, the slightly less um, force on the inside walls of the arteries when the heart is relaxing. Okay, so the final area we'll look at is the heart. One of the first things we probably would want to put, say is uh, this notion of the heart rate, which is the number of beats per minute. And there are a certain number of heart rates, or different types of heart rates, that we need to be aware of. First of which is resting heart rate, which tends to be in uh, the average male adult 72 beats per minute. Now with exercise we would expect our heart rate to increase, so we'd have an increased heart rate, 
and usually during exercise, during activity, we would be working at an increased heart rate, which we would call or refer to as the working heart rate. And then if we were working at a maximum level, we would be working at our maximum heart rate, which is 220 minus our age. And, that, and then this links to our recovery heart rate, which we could refer to as the heart rate per minute uh, during the period of time it takes from finishing activity to get back to our resting heart rate. So this is a great opportunity to bring in a relational concept here of cardiovascular fitness and how that component of fitness links to heart rate and the various different heart rates and what the heart is required to do in exercise. And the last point I want to make here is this one about stroke volume. I'm just going to move down here because it links with heart rate and number of beats per minute. But stroke volume is the volume or the amount of blood which is pumped out of the heart per beat. So we put that there. And that in itself, that's kind of a bit small, never mind, that in itself links to cardiac output, which is the amount of blood which is pumped out of the heart per minute. Now there is a little bit more that you need to know about uh, the cardiovascular system, particularly the short term and long term effects of the cardiovascular system due to exercise. But the point of this video is to show you how you can build up your responses by talking about relatively straightforward simple points, the unistructural points, and developing those with the green multistructural points, another point, another point, linking them together, showing how they link together, developing them, and where uh, applicable, where appropriate and where possible, you can then relate those points to other areas and other topics of your studies to bring the thing um, together with even more substance. So hopefully you'll be able to use these strategies in the construction of your answers and that you found this video useful.